The speed at which Japan expanded its power across Southeast Asia is one of the more impressive feats during the Second World War. Not only would the Air Force and Navy play vital roles, the Army, and in particular the armoured units, would help push through Allied defences. One of its main tanks, the Type 95 Ha-Go, would be one of the main driving forces to this success. In today's video, we look at this World War II Japanese light tank. If you enjoy this video and want to see more, hit that subscribe button. It's free and really helps the channel reach more history lovers like you. When you think about tanks from the Second World War, Japan is probably not your first thought. But the armour produced prior to and during the war actually helped them achieve much of their early victories. One of these was the Type 95, also known as the Hargo. This 7 ton light tank would be one of the most widely produced vehicles for Japan during the entire war. It was a very compact tank at only 4.3 metres long, 2 metres wide, and 2.1 metres high. Its armour was very light, ranging between 6 and 12 millimetres, depending on which part of the tank. The main variant featured a 37 millimetre cannon as its main gun, which sat in the turret. It would also have between one and two 7.7mm machine guns, one in the hull facing forward next to the driver, and one in the rear of the turret. The turret itself had to be traversed manually, and had a cupola with vision slits for the commander, who also acted as the main gunner. He was one of three crew, which also included the driver and hull gunner. The 120 horsepower diesel engine allowed for a top speed of 45 kilometers or 28 miles per an hour, with a range of 250 kilometers or 400 miles. In the early part of the Japanese expansion, the Type 95 performed very well. Its intended role was that of infantry and cavalry support, and it fulfilled this task easily. An example of its ability to assist the infantry was a feature at the rear of the tank. Infantry could press a small button on the outside, which allowed for communication with the commander inside. It was one of the first tanks to have this feature. The Type 95 was extremely versatile. Its light weight and flexible track system allowed it to move over difficult terrain with ease. Its small size also allowed for movement through dense jungle, and while out in the open, it could easily clear trenches and ditches. Most of its early engagements with Allied tanks went well. The British only had a limited number of light tanks in the region, and the Hargo's 37mm cannon made short work of these. It was when the United States entered the war that it would finally begin to meet tanks of a similar calibre. The M3 Stuart tanks also featured a 37mm cannon, but its armour was much thicker than its Japanese counterpart. In most tank duels between these tanks, the victor would usually be the one who got off the first shot. But it was the introduction of the M3 Grant and the M4 Sherman, who both had a 75mm main gun, which proved to be the Type 95's undoing. These cannons were far too much for the thinly armoured Hargo, and by this time it was 1943, and Japan was well and truly on the defensive. Some Type 95s were used as static bunkers, dug in along the beaches defending Japanese-held islands. While the Shermans found it relatively easy to knock out these Japanese light tanks, the infantry's weaponry also improved. The bazooka, along with the 37mm anti-tank gun, allowed Allied infantry to penetrate the thin armour. Ultimately, in the final stages of the war, the Type 95 was virtually useless against Allied armour, but with around 2,300 manufactured, it was one of the most widely used by the Imperial Japanese Army, from the first days of the war right up until the last. Certainly an interesting and versatile tank from the Second World War. What did you think about the Japanese Type 95 Hargo? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. As always guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to expand your knowledge and join the growing Premier History community.